Welcome to Touch Technology Review. Today, I'm going to show you how to set up two USB microphones into one Mac computer. This is not as straightforward as you might expect. If you've ever tried to connect multiple microphones into Mac OS X, you'll probably notice no matter what software you're using, only one of them can be used at any given time. However, there is some software available in OS X called Audio MIDI Setup, which allows us to create an aggregate device. And the aggregate device can combine two audio sources into one, allowing us to record with two microphones together into our audio software. For today's demonstration, I'm using two Boyer microphones, the Boyer PM500 and PM700. I'm talking directly into the PM700 now. And if you listen now, I'll switch over to the PM500, which has also been recording at the same time in GarageBand as a separate audio track. So this type of setup is ideal for those of you recording podcasts or any type of video production really, where you have multiple guests with their own microphone. The setup process is actually quite straightforward. You're going to need two pieces of software. The first is the audio MIDI setup tool, which is actually available in OS X already. So in order to access that, do a search for audio MIDI setup. And secondly, you also need GarageBand or Logic Pro. For this demonstration, I'm going to show you how to do it in GarageBand because it's freely available for anybody that owns a Mac computer. It should already be installed in your Mac. If not, you can go to the App Store and download it for free. So let's get started with the first part of the process, which is setting up and combining our two microphones as a single aggregate device in the audio MIDI setup software. As I mentioned earlier, we're going to start with the audio MIDI setup app. And in order to do that, I'll bring up the spotlight search field in OS X by tapping on the command key and the space bar at the same time. I'll type in audio MIDI setup and then click on the app icon that appears below it to open up the app. On the left hand side, you'll see a list of devices already connected to the Mac and it probably goes without saying that you need to plug in both microphones via USB before proceeding with this step. I've already plugged in the Boya PM700 and PM500 and you can see them in the left hand column. I'll tap on the plus button icon on the bottom left hand corner of the screen and then I'll select the option to create an aggregate device. And now I'll go ahead and select the PM700 and PM500 devices in the right hand column. If you're wondering why there are two of each, that's because these microphones have both audio input and output for headphone monitoring as well. If your microphone only has one input, then simply select that. At the top, you'll see a drop down list to select the clock source. This doesn't make a big difference for microphones, but it relates to the timing of the audio. So just select your main microphone for this one. Next is the sample rate, which will most likely be 44.1 or 48 kilohertz select the highest option available in this field, leave the drift connection tick boxes as is, all boxes checked, and for best practice, let's go and rename our aggregate device so we can find it easily when it comes time to configure it in our software. I'll call this aggregate device Boyer Dual Microphones. Next, I'm going straight into GarageBand and into the preferences, which you can access from the top menu, tap on the audio MIDI tab and change the input device to the new aggregate device we just created, the Boyer Dual Microphones. And for the output device, I'm going to keep it set to system setting so that I can monitor the audio using my headphones plugged into the 3.5 input of the MacBook Pro. Now I'll delete the track that was already there and click on the microphone input type and choose input one and two which is the first Boya PM700 in my aggregate device. And then I'll click on the plus button to add another audio track. And this will be input three and four for the PM500 that I set up in the aggregate device. And now I have two stereo tracks of audio, one on top of the other. First is the Boya PM700 and below that the Boya PM500. I've already set up GarageBand to show the record enable icon for each track in the header section. If you can't see these icons, right click on one of the track headers and in the drop down list, select configure track header and turn on record enable. Click on the record enable icons on each of the tracks until they're both blinking. 
Then click on the record icon in the play bar at the top of the screen and you can now see you're recording both audio tracks in GarageBand in real time. You know that it's working if you see a waveform appear on each track. The last thing I want to show you is how to record in mono instead of stereo. To do this, click on each track and then in the track section in the lower thirds part of the screen, click on input to change track one from 1-2 one Boyer Joule to one Boyer Joule and then tap on the input of track two and change that from 3-4 Boyer Joule to three Boyer Jewel. And after doing this, if I press record, you can see we now get a single waveform in each of the tracks, visually demonstrating that we're now recording in mono as opposed to the dual waveform that we saw in the previous example when we were recording two stereo tracks. So hopefully that's worked out for you. If you've had any trouble in finding the microphones or getting an audio signal, try restarting your computer after you've set up the microphones in the audio MIDI setup app and then opening GarageBand after the restart. Thanks for watching, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to hit me up with a like and consider subscribing to the channel so that you're notified of up and coming video releases. And if you have any questions about what you've seen today, feel free to drop them in the comments box below and I'll endeavor to get back to you as soon as possible. See you on the next one, bye for now. Thank you.